Okay, so it's maiden day for the new AR Pro. This is a labour of love and uh, everything that I've learnt from the test plane I've incorporated into this. So today's the maiden day. So uh, thanks to all the guys on the, the Anna Fix, Fix Wing group that give me uh, all the support. Uh, yeah, I have launched a few of these planes before, crashed a few, um, but yeah, I'm still nervous. I think a lot of people are nervous before a maiden. I think that's good. And that's part of the adrenaline of this hobby. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. I'm sure that everything will go okay. I'm, well, I'm hoping. Um, you see, that, uh, that's, that's just it, the, the hope. Um, but, yeah, let's uh, try and get it in the air. The wind is a bit stronger than I would have liked for a maiden, about 10 miles an hour, but um, gusting up to maybe 20 every now and then. But, uh, yeah, this is only, only weather window I've really got um, before the wind and the rain sets in for maybe five or six days, according to the weather forecast. So we're going to put it up into the wind and, uh, and see how we get on. Ignition on. Return to launch. Okay, here we go, shit or bust. <whistles> yes, she's up. She's up, she's loitering, she's holding. 80 meters is my loiter height. Looks to be holding that nicely. A bit windy, seems to get a bit buffeted. And those clouds look very ominous for rain, so I have to be pretty quick here. Right, taking control. Feels good, completely not tuned. Feels like the uh, test plane at the moment. So before I auto tune it, I'm just going to uh, put it into angle. Angle mode. Auto balance. Just auto level it. Quite a lot of buffeting. Acro mode. Okay. Let's look at these pids. Okay, that's the pids. Let's uh, let's auto tune it. Auto balance. Auto tune mode. Auto balance. Auto tune mode. Rolls feel great, feels just like a test plane. Don't seem to be changing anything in the uh, OSD, why not? Rolls are crisp. It's that guy with his dog, I don't want to upset him. Oh, the wind's really picking up. Right, I'm going to bring it into land. Let's see where this guy and his dog is. Bring it into land. And, um, see where we are on the laptop. Let's turn the auto tune off. So I can save that and save the auto level settings. 
So the pitch degrees on auto level was zero. It'd be interesting if it's changed. It was one degree on the test plane. Let's not fluff this first landing. Okay, oh, all right. Let's uh, save and reboot. Okay, okay, let's go get the plane. All looks good. This, uh, this switch is really handy that I've got for the, uh, for the air unit, because they get hot, so I just turn it off and I've still got the plane on. So fiddle around with it without uh, overheating the, the air unit on the ground. So the E6000, uh, so the nose, I hit the grass quite, quite hard there. So there's the, you see the grass mark on, the, on there? Let's get a cloth. Just disconnect the lipo. So the E6000 is a bit grass stained here. And it wipes off beautifully. So, first test onto grass, it's, it's wet as well, so it's obviously waterproof, not... Awesome. Phew. And relax, anxiety over. That wasn't bad, I'm really pleased. So let's uh, get the laptop on it and um, let's check where we are at 1500 in terms of level flight. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so I've got the plane plugged into the laptop. First thing I'm looking at is the uh, outputs, um, the servos, servo three and four. So it's actually, I'm using the uh, permanently enabled trim and uh, after coming landing and saving, that's, uh, well, it's pretty good actually. Um, Inactivity alarm. 1550 and 1491. Wow. Perfect. That's really good. Um, I'm not really going to bother to maybe try and tweak that mechanically anymore. That's well within the tolerance that I'm happy with for my flying style. So that's that. That's brilliant. Um, strange thing is, on the PID tuning page, it hasn't changed the PIDs. It's left them completely standard and the feed forward, but it has changed the rates. Um, so the rates were both at 200 roll and pitch. Now it's put roll rate at 530 degrees per second and it's left the pitch rate at 200. So I'm not sure what went wrong there with the auto tune. I'll try that again. Um, let's have a look at the advanced tuning and look at the, the auto level. Auto level. Yeah, uh, it's put the auto level at one degree the same as the test plane, so that, that's encouraging. But the uh, the PIDs, yeah, that's a bit odd. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, put it back up in the air and see why that didn't, uh, that didn't work. Oh shit, we have to land, the rain is starting to pour down. Oh bollocks. Can't see already. Come on, come on, get down. Oh shit, get down. Oh god, it's chucking it down. 
Oh my God, Britain. You've got to love Britain. Come on. Oh shit. Ignition off. We crashed in the rain. Fuck. Well, I do believe that in my videos you should do practical demonstrations of everything that you do in your build. So that was a pretty hard crash. That came down pretty hard. So the rain obviously did something. I'll have to inspect it in a minute. Uh, the only thing it's really done is it's, it's just the, the lipo's pushed forward and it's just snipped off the uh, one of the uh, like the the locating pins on the hatch, which I can glue back on and then touch it up with a bit of E6000 and be good as new. But the, the hatch itself is not cracked or split or anything. And normally these hatches crack and split. So underneath, uh, I've got a bit of uh, water here. So let's get a cloth and uh, see if we can just put a bit of water on here and then see how well this E6000 protects the plane from scuffs. Wow. Now that, if ever you wanted a test, I guess, of how E6000 mixed with toluene will protect your plane after a hard crash into the mud, uh, that is as good as new. It really is as good as new. So yeah, um, plane flew great till the rainstorm came. Um, it was only short lived as well, it stopped again now. Um, and uh, it's uh, completely undamaged apart from that hatch cover, which uh, is such an easy little repair. And the E6000 worked a dream. Still got to figure out why it's not auto tuning, but uh, I'm sure I'll be able to get that figured out with the, maybe with Mark's help. And uh, we'll be back to, uh, to fly another day. So I'm going to go home because it looks like it's going to chuck it down with rain again. I'm going to go have a coffee, celebrate the good maiden, um, the learning curve, and uh, the fact that the E6000 did its job. That's it folks on this one. Uh, catch you on the next one. Cheers. Okay, so we're back in the workshop um, after that flight. So first thing is, um, got back to the workshop, checked the, uh, the electronics, absolutely no water in there whatsoever. The, the crash was nothing to do with water ingress. The crash was down to me panicking because I was trying to land, I couldn't see properly, the wind was gusting, and I stalled the plane basically. So. Uh, if you look at the uh, the video OSD footage, um, you'll you'll see that's what happened. So, um, yeah. So um, down to the actual uh, hatch. I've repaired the hatch already. So um, as you can see that the hatch is uh, is back in place. If I just take it off, you can see that what I've actually done is I've just actually uh, I've put this this locating pin back on with the E6000, and I just took a sharp blade and cut some of the E6000 off and just rebrushed some uh, E6000. I didn't thin it with toluene, just uh, an old brush and just smoothed it on. So I've re basically I've resealed that hatch lid um, with E6000. So that's going to be, you know, it's not completely cured yet. It was only four hours ago, but uh, yeah, it's pretty strong already. So yeah, that'll be fine. Um, and it's really difficult to see. Just let me take the, uh, the GoPro out. But the impact was quite hard and the the actual camera mount here, the DGI camera mount, was full of mud. It was absolutely caked full of mud. So um, the impact was pretty hard, but it's really difficult to see. I'll put a photograph up. The only damage really, well, it's not even damage, is there's a very slight crease in the E6000 or the foam, or probably both. So the actual skin of the E6000 has really held the foam together tightly, I think. Um, this was the idea. Um, a crash of that kind of impact without that you know you could be you know definitely breaking those weak areas where where the locating pins go in there's really a really thin area here and that usually breaks on impact I mean I've broken it on the test plane so many times with impacts less than that so yeah overall um, I'm really pleased with how the maiden went in terms of the, the pits I've spoken to Mark and um, it would seem that um, the auto tune was working properly 
uh, it just didn't change from the defaults. And I learned that, that Marcus told me, and I'll need to confirm this with him, he might put a comment in the, in the video if he watches it to confirm, but uh, that the, 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 the default settings were based upon an AR Pro. So um, I'm gonna take that as my AR Pro is as kind of perfect as it can get. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, the way it flew was brilliant. Um, it was pretty windy and gusty towards the end. So I'm really looking forward to a calmer day to give it another good tuning session. But I've got to say that um, I am very, very happy with uh, this AR Pro build. And um, I'm just about to start another one uh, because when I go to Germany um, and I'm flying with Mark Hoffman, um, he has a tendency to, when we're flying together, tear my planes to pieces. So. I need at least three with me to make sure that uh, if he gets through two, I'll stop flying with him on the third one. Okay, that's it on this one. Um, I guess the next video I'll be putting out will be just basically the actual review of all the mods on this plane and everything I've done to build it, which I think some people were quite interested in seeing. So I'll put that together over the next few days and uh, give a full review on exactly how this thing went together with all the mods. Okay, that's it folks. Until the next one, take it easy.